the derricks back. It's gonna start. Seven twenty, August seventh. So we've missed missed you all as well. We missed you all as well. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Um, I feel So, Rain and GW messing the same day. Now, so I'm clapping after that, after we missed you all. We missed you all. Same day. Um, so this it should be interesting. I'm looking forward to giving my opinion in the comment section. What a show! What a show to come back with! So much to share today. I'm going to have to take this piece by piece because there have been so many, as they say, prophetic discoveries. Discoveries that just uh, unexplainable. going to be such an eye-opening show it's going to be one of those programs that by the end of the program you're going to be shouting for joy even though we may be facing some serious adversity and some bad stuff may be coming but it's all working together for the good Neil is a very significant prophetic book it's a, as they say an end times book talked about Daniel a lot in the program right the program that I did a while ago uh, about Donald Trump the president President Donald Trump. There was an issue, right? There was an issue. Everybody thought he was going to win by a landslide. I had a kooky dream where he was in a coffin covered in swamp moss and, uh, and then he was alive. And because of that, I had told everybody, you know what? He's probably not going to win the election. It's going to look like he's, and you helped me with this, a lot of you, because I didn't really understand it until the next show. A lot of you clued me into the fact that that swamp moss could have represented politics so that he was in the coffin on this side in my dream but yet he was celebrating and dancing on the uh, on the left. When your one character dies off you're you're still over here on the other end partying I thought, well, maybe he's in on it, right? Maybe there's going to be a big swerve. Yeah, as they well, say, yeah, in I'm thinking industry, everybody's in, in on wrestling. It. A big swerve where, you know... My only question at times was, not that everybody is in on it, but does everybody know the actual script? And are they playing, even though they know the very ending as well? Or are they going through the emotions, because that's exactly how they feel as all these things are happening? the uh, bad guys that are called heels and the good guys that are baby faces they're actually in on the story together they all yeah work work it out so that everybody gets this beautiful show but I'm actually holding out hope that something else might happen and all of these discoveries that have been just uncovered uncannily uh, just just within the last couple of weeks or so 
it kind of lends to the fact that even though right now everything seems so spooky, in, in a short period of time, things are going to, uh, they're going to turn around, right? Because that, that other eclipse is coming 2024. In my novel, I, uh, 2022 is kind of a big turning point. 2022, in time, things are going to, uh, they're going to turn around, right? Because that, that other eclipse is coming 2024. In my novel, I, uh, 2022 is kind of a big turning point. So I did a video about Nebuchadnezzar. Now Nebuchadnezzar, just seeing, so you know, give you a little background until it, it, before I get into all of the discoveries. Nebuchadnezzar was this great king who basically, you know, kind of overthrew, overthrew all because Israel had become corrupt, came in, took over, became the great king, and uh, had these dreams. There was this prophet named Daniel who uh, could interpret these dreams, and he interpreted them. Because of it, he found a great favor in Nebuchadnezzar's eyes. But he told Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this gigantic tree that, uh, you know, grow up in it, in, uh, and, and it sheltered all the animals. And it was very symbolic of, of, a, of a king that would rise up and basically the whole world would be under How its, many times faith is you know, mentioned its, in its, New its Testament? But in Overboard, instant, man. It was a lot. Like any verse you read, you'll probably see faith. You know, that's how big it is. See? Because of it, he found a great favor in Nebuchadnezzar's eyes. But he told Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this gigantic tree. That, uh, you know... Are you telling me God can't use a person who's fully yielded to him? With Christian doctrine or in your Bible, that critics will point out, saying, oh, look at this, your God changes his mind, but... In his Bible, it says that he doesn't repent. He doesn't change his mind. Because I went through that. Because I went through a lot of that. But that's uh, because of that, I became the, the one that received all this power and wonderful. and it sheltered all the animals. And it was very symbolic of, of some forms of grace involved here. It's just not as big as us in the New Testament. Our grace is so big that God's like, uh, absolutely no work required. You know, kind of overthrew, overthrew well, because Israel had become corrupt, came in, took over, became the great king and uh, had these dreams. There was this prophet named Daniel who uh, could interpret these dreams, and he interpreted them. Because of it, he found a great favor in Nebuchadnezzar's eyes. But he told Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this gigantic tree that, uh, you know, grow up in it, and, uh, and, and it sheltered all the animals. And it was very... Remember the video yesterday, I was talking about the animals in the Bible. It doesn't say anywhere that God said that um, people were having sex with animals. Animals might have been having sex, but they weren't there. They were absent. Their member might have been there with the human, and therefore that would be caused for them to say that humans were having sex with animals. It's very symbolic of, of, of a king that would rise up and basically the whole world would be under its, you know, its, its, its rule. But in an instant, it was locked down. He All the great stuff you see doesn't come without cause. So in order to explode the church and for God to bless it, you must go through pain, you must go through suffering, you must go through hardship, you must go through tears, you must go through trials in your life because it is through the tears, blood, sweat, and everything that power comes on from on high yes. and you become a better preacher, a better Christian, a better person in yes. life. Okay. My grace because Jesus died. The Lord. The Jesus dying as in the host body, Jesus dies and so there's a great tree that grows in the midst of the garden that gets chopped down 
the Old Testament, I mean, you got to be honest now. In the Old Testament, if God never shed grace on anybody in the Old Testament, no one would have been saved and no one would have uh, been rescued from destruction of sin. And every gets rid of these two heretical doctrines, all right? So pay attention, all right? When I make a rule in the church, all right? A rule's a rule, and then you're going to be penalized for it. But because I'm the boss and I'm the leader of an organization, he had this dream and it was cut down. But the stump, the stump and the, uh, the root remained in the ground. Now this is significant because I saw Trump as Nebuchadnezzar and I had said that in an instant everything was going to be taken away from me. in this video right here. Near. This is why we should be excited because the last king of Babylon, his name by the way, not Nebuchadnezzar, no, 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 Nabonidus is the guy's name. Nabonidus is the guy's name. Now we're talking about building circuits without actually touching. Thou shalt not touch. He's bursting up. Nabonidus. the second incarnation of the Babylonian upper, right after Nebuchadnezzar. Some say that he's related. Now, in the book of Daniel, this is where it gets weird, okay? Because if Trump is significant of Nebuchadnezzar, then you would say that President Biden would be Nabonidus. Now, this is where it gets very confusing. This is Quran in 1948 confirmed that Nabonidus, not Nebuchadnezzar, was the demented king, the mad king, the king who lost his marbles and couldn't think straight, couldn't speak, didn't know where he was most of the time. Nabonidus, king that followed Nebuchadnezzar. Nabonidus, isn't that something? Isn't that interesting? Now this is the guy that goes around mumbling and babbling and everything else. He's the guy that has his kingdom taken away. Now, Nabonidus, just so you know, he has a, uh, a son. We learn about this son in the book of Daniel as well, chapter, uh, I think it's chapter five. What if I, uh, 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 and there's a person Belshazzar. that I'm pretty close now, with and I make an exception the to the person. The writing's on the wall. You see, Belshazzar, he didn't respect God. He didn't care about God at all. He actually, he was all into partying and doing drugs and all sorts of nonsense. Probably he was doing things with a bunch of people he shouldn't have been doing things with. And, uh, and God corrected him for it. The king, the guy who's losing his marbles, the guy who can't think straight. He has this son, a spoiled little rich kid that who's uh, partying all the time. Why? Because Love it's an understandable being the king's kid, situation right? that person is going made he's called a king in in uh in in the book of daniel but really he wasn't a king he was a regent he was just kind of put in charge while the old man was out bumping into stuff or saying weird things and not making a lot of sense and doing i mean look corruption <coughs> is at the helm because people have corrupted people have turned away from the god of israel they've turned away from the god of love they turn away from the one true god the only one that unites us all the thing the the, the one who created everything it has been totally ignored. And they worship what? Like Belshazzar? The gods of silver, the gods of gold, the gods of stone, things they... Silver and gold.
so good. Car on. They're their own hands made. They worship the things they own. They're the rockets that they could take them to space. Ooh! through so I'm going to say I'm gonna make an exception that means I'm giving grace to that person right I give right to space while everybody else is suffering you don't think God's gonna answer that God is answering this is the yeah, day God wants this to is the end people. the too. end of a corrupt system the end of Babylon because on that wall when Daniel came in guess what happens he read what those words meant give you all of this stuff. I'll give you all this stuff. Third of the kingdom. All of this great stuff could be yours if you just tell me what this means. And you know what Daniel said? Because he knew what it meant. He's like, keep it. I don't want it. I don't want any of it. <laughs> because you, you sure? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm good. Uh, I'll stick with I don't need any animal sacrifice. I'll stick with what God gave me. I'm good, keep it. Maybe we should just leave this one alone. Yeah. Maybe we should yeah, leave this yeah. one alone. And the guy's like, no, I have to know. I have to know what it means. I have to know what it means. So Daniel's like, okay. And, uh, you know, he goes on to say, Your Majesty, the Most High God, gave your father sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. God puts the people in charge that they're supposed to be in charge. And he said because of the high position he gave them, all the nations and every people and every language was scared of him. Because he did some terrible How things. How many of you went through suffering them, and then right? you Those learned. that the king wanted to put the death, yeah. he put the death. Those that he wanted out of the way, he put them out of the way. He did whatever he wanted. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was disposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was a guy who was like, hey, I did this, look at what I did, I'm the best. I'm the best, nobody's done what I've done, look at me. You see, God put President Trump in power. And uh, some could say, because he's like Nebuchadnezzar, right? That head of gold, right? He's known for his gold. He's got a gold toilet for crying out loud. He gold toilet. I wonder, if you, I wonder if you got your microphones fixed. Which was inside the host body. Good afternoon. I wanted to uh, come to you today and <clears> let <throat> you know, first and foremost, you're going to be seeing a lot more of myself and Malia on this channel and our other channels. Uh, we have an obligation to give as freely as we've been given, and that means that the understandings and the peace um, that we have had, we have an obligation to freely share that. And obviously, this is an incredibly troubling time, as I've been saying here on this channel for more than three years. I've given some pretty great detail as to what was about to come. And so here we are from food shortages, wood shortages, chain shortages, 
certainly shortages of uh, common sense and peaceful, mindful people. Things are going to get very crazy very fast, and so I want to be here for you. And I want you to know that Malia and I both are going to be here, and we're going to be creating a lot more content discussing the things that we've experienced over the past few months that we haven't been able to keep you up to date on. We've been working on this property, getting it prepared for the monsoons, and uh, just in time because the monsoons had come, and this, uh, this house uh, was essentially built to be flooded with mud. <laughs> so we've had a task of spreading hundreds of thousands of pounds of uh, very cheap materials, but hard materials, rocks, sand, dirt, um, good materials that stay, uh, that uh, don't turn into clay and mud and turn this place into a complete disaster zone and a flooded house. So, but I wanted to let you know that I'm gonna be doing a live show tomorrow because I wanna be able to discuss all of these things, all of these things that are taking place, everything that you're seeing and to reinforce and to help you understand that the division that you are experiencing with families and friends and the division that you're experiencing seeing with everyone, every single organization, every single thing that you can imagine within this world is being destroyed, whether intentional or unintentional, as Bill Gates would say. Nevertheless, it is being destroyed and completely rebuilt. It is called the Great Reset for that reason. So with that great reset, what to expect for those of us that are in Christ? Well, Christ promised you exactly what was going to take place. There's going to be persecution. You're experiencing it already. You're seeing it ramping up at an accelerated rate. So this is where we get to discuss these types of things and how you handle this. This is why Christ could so easily say, follow me. That means do as I do. Do as I do, just follow me. Because you see, <laughs> the lepers across the river, the leper colonies being cast out of synagogues, not having the ability to buy or sell, because that's essentially what being cast out of the synagogues also meant. So the beast and the beast system, the mark of the beast, meaning just that. And anyone who thinks that this is a part of it, Anybody that thinks that there's actually going to be a specific mark. Oh, there's a number of things. You just listen to the prophecy and think about this for a second. That it says, when you see the man standing in a place he ought not be, that is desolation. Well, guess what? Where is that temple? Everybody keeps looking for it. That, that temple. Well, that's within you, just as Christ said. Oh, well, the literal one. If that temple is within you, and they're coming into that temple and taking it by force. Now you understand what Jesus was talking about when he said, from John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until right now, the kingdom has been taken by force, by the violent violent, take the kingdom. What kingdom and where? Now that's right here. So now you know what to expect because the intention of those people that serve their master. You see, because all of the people that really run this world, you have to understand that they also had their day in the wilderness. They were awakened and understood these secrets, which they still keep secret, but the Christ told you not to keep any of it secret. He told you to speak it, to say it, to live it, to walk it, to follow him, and pick up your own cross. Stop relying on his. You need to pick up your own. But you think about this. These people that had their 40 days in the wilderness and were offered all the kingdoms by Satan, well, they said, they just simply accepted. That's what it is. So now you know who you're dealing with. You're dealing with folks that do understand the mysteries, the mysteries, when I give schools, the secret societies, and they do understand how to control things. But see, they have a master, a prince over them, prince of power, those that serve a prince. 
Well, they have a master over them, and he is coordinating this. If you're still thinking about the devil as a little red man with a pointy tail and a pitchfork, well, build your temple again. You're All of this stuff is coming. To the real, Do you know who uh, is known as Cyrus oh, in yeah, the land he's today? Don't that you worry about a thing. It's all around the corner. Join me for my live show tomorrow. I'll have it posted here tonight. Join me for that scheduled show. Bring anybody that you think needs to hear the things I've got to say. I love you very much. I'll see you. I'm in the end of the world and you want everyone to be your slave. And you became a better Christian. Guess what you did? You went and you became a better Christian. Guess what you did? You went, what a fallen devil! I must have hit a nerve. Once again, I am not saying the dude's good. I don't know. Worry. I worry. I hope. I hope that the Lord is going to use him to do good things to bring back. But you got to remember, they're all in and up together, in my opinion. Now you understand what Jesus was talking about when he said, from John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until right now. Because all of the people that really run this world, you have to understand that they also had their day in the wilderness. They were awakened and understood these secrets, which they still keep secret, but Christ told you not to keep any of it secret. He told you to speak it, to say it, to live it, to walk people that had their 40 days in the wilderness and were offered all the kingdoms by Satan. Well, they said, they just simply accept it. That's all it is. So now you know who you're dealing with. You're dealing with folks that do understand the mysteries ministry schools and secret societies. Grace to somebody, what does that mean? When there's a rule that I set out, but I give a grace to somebody, I'm making a what? An exception. You want to lock down that system in the end of the world and you want everyone to be your slave, AKA Satan's rule on earth, the angel of the bottomless pit. You could roll out and say, hey, I need everybody to take this poke so we can get that metal stuff in you understand how to control things. Let's see, they have a master, a prince over them, a prince of those that serve a prince. Darius coming in, that's the stump, that's the kingdom. Okay, Cyrus the Great, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus returns, falls as Nebuchadnezzar, comes back as Cyrus, stumps there, and he likes Daniel so much. so that he wants to kind of make him ruler of everything else but all the people that are there they didn't like that they're like no way we, you know what about us what about us so what they do is they trick the king they trick the king into making him you know once again go to his pride nobody can worship God but you for 30 days and they knew that Daniel always prayed to God they knew that Daniel was a servant of God and they knew Daniel wouldn't listen Cyrus comes in they uh, they take over and Darius Cyrus like Daniel okay I, I use Darius and Cyrus interchangeably because there's some, uh, historically, they're, they're basically the same character. Even though they may be two different people, they were both co- they were the ones that were ruling. They liked Daniel. They were going to give Daniel a huge, it was kind of like, could you imagine the stump being in the ground? Darius coming in, that's the stump, that's the kingdom. Okay, Cyrus the Great, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus returns falls as Nebuchadnezzar, comes back as Cyrus, stumps there, and he likes Daniel. So much so that he wants to kind of make him ruler of everything else. But all the people that are there, they didn't like that. They're like, no way. We, you know, what about us? What about us? And what they do is they trick the king. They trick the king into making him, you know, once again, go to his pride. Nobody can went to the king and they said, oh, oh, well, you know what you got to do? You got to put Daniel in lions then now because you know the rules. You know the rules, king. Can't be broke. So uh, Darius, Cyrus, says to Daniel, you know, may your God protect you. They seek to devour. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in God's sight, nor have I ever done you wrong before, your majesty. Interesting. Never. If you do the right thing, 
God protects you. So Daniel's restored. And let you know that uh, and everybody then a new is day rises and everybody is for those that serve God. Because and, God will uh, confirm things in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So that means that you'll hear things today. once, you'll hear it twice, the, you'll see things once, um, you'll see I've it twice, you'll see it again and again and again, and you'll know that God is speaking, and God is speaking, okay? So three years ago, that you'll hear things once, you'll hear it twice, you'll see things once, you'll see it twice, you'll see it again and again and again, and you'll know that God is speaking, and God is speaking, okay? So three years ago, it's crazy. Theologists, they thought it was a, a decorative pillar until they saw the Christian symbol at the end of it, this one. See that? Saudi. What's happening today? How do I know? Because there were other discoveries too. There was another discovery. This time it was two coins. 2,000 year old coins hailing sell it and just give the money freedom wouldn't you kind of look at that person of zion wow in wow. jerusalem in the west bank you're these amazing two these ones out there in the middle of nowhere i know your pride and the insolence and guess what one side front. bears for you a have come leaf, down to see just the like the battle. sarcophagus that's a coincidence don't you think do you know what zion is by the way it's the name of god's city it's the new kingdom, new Jerusalem, Zion. This is it. freedom to Zion. It's on the wall. This is a clay cylinder that was found. So I'm wondering if this is like the implant. Because they're corrupt, they're corrupted, what they're doing God has heard the cries of his people. Because there are a lot of you out there, a lot of you in the audience right now. You've been praying, right? I've been telling you, don't worry, it's okay. It's a big movie. It's okay. God's gonna be, God's gonna protect you. God's gonna take care of you. But big up upheaval is coming. It's coming regardless. But if you have faith, you'll understand. If you can read the words on that wall, the scripture says. You could be saved. These people who uh, hate dispensational salvations, and when they hear us talking about exceptions, they say, oh, they're just making stuff up then uh, how can they believe that there is no dispensational salvation, it's only salvation by grace, no works involved, absolutely not, then it's like, for example, parking reserved only for pastor. What does that mean? What that, uh, what that means uh, right here is that the parking, it makes the rule over here that it's reserved only for the pastor, right? But let's say we put an exception here, okay? So let's change it where it can say where uh, parking is prohibited except the pastor. All right, the rule is what? The rule is, is that parking's prohibited. But when they put the exception there except the pastor, uh, that means, oh, I'm an exception. I can park over there, right? Because I'm... Yes, because my, my company bought the parking lot of the church that's right there. So we were still parking there, Kim. The pastor. Does that exception deny or disprove the rule? No. When they put an exception there, that only proves the rule. Iron Maiden returns with the writing on the wall. So it's the iron mix. The, the tree, the ginormous tree in the garden on six years. It's about the number six. There's six uh, tankers or something over there. Six. This thing here looks like that. Uh, that thing I said could could possibly be an implant. It's identical on the guy's arm. Of Cain. It's being. 
those who can understand the writing on the wall, Balthasar says, are going to be clothed in a royal robe. They're going to be given. Those who can understand the writing on the wall, Balthasar says, are going to be clothed in royal robes. They're going to be given up to a third of the kingdom. Those that understand the warning. Belshazzar, none of the, uh, their, their sorcerers, none of these guys, they can figure it out. So somebody tells them about Daniel. Daniel, who was Nebuchadnezzar's. You know, he, he, Daniel actually liked Nebuchadnezzar. Like, I, like uh, he, he, he didn't want to see Nebuchadnezzar fall. He's like, you know, pray, king, that maybe you can turn this around. But remember, there was a stump that was left in the earth. A stump, a root, a grassroots movement. Anybody know what that could be symbolic of today? Got a lot of people still wearing those hats, right? Yeah, the stump still in the ground, the roots still in the ground, the movement, Being born as they say, it's still a birth in the mark. ground. And I'm not a fan of either. Just so you know, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm not on the fence. I don't, I'm not into the system. I'm praying that God can use this king or that king. I'm praying God's just going to do what God's going to do. I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm hearing but I do like what I'm seeing and hearing spiritually. So the king, Belshazzar, came and says, I'll give you all of this stuff. I'll give you all this stuff. Third of the king, all of this great stuff could be yours if you just tell me what this means. And you know what Daniel said? Because he knew what it meant. He's like, keep it. I don't want it. I don't want any of it. <laughs> because you sure? Maybe we should just leave this one alone. Maybe we should leave this one alone. Balshazzar's partying, and what happens? But you, Balshazzar, you've not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Instead, you set yourself up against the Lord of Heaven. You set yourself up against the Creator of all. You king right now. It's divided. He, his own party, uh, President Biden. His own party is so divided. It's it's laughable. It's laughable. And we're all so so upset. We're all so scared. And yet, all we need to do is have faith and just trust in God and do the right thing. That's what Daniel did. Okay? That's what Daniel did. And, uh, and it worked out okay for him. It worked out okay for him. But I wanna this is I, I have to also say because I also see what's coming next. Now this is where it gets really weird. Okay. Basically the same character. Even though they may be two different people, they were both co they were the ones that were ruling. They liked Daniel. They were going to give Daniel a huge, it was kind of like, could you imagine the stump being in the ground? There. Character, even though they may be two different people, they were both co, they were the ones that were ruling. They liked Daniel. They were going to give Daniel a huge, it was kind of like, could you imagine the stump being in the ground, Darius coming in, that's the stump, that's the kingdom, okay, Cyrus the Great, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus returns, falls as Nebuchadnezzar, comes back as Cyrus, stumps there, and he likes Daniel, so much so that he wants to kind of make him ruler of everything else, but all the people that are there, they didn't like that, they're like, no way, symbol at the end of it, this one. China and Robin Hood. Somebody right after the service, we would love to continue to pray with you as you begin your faith journey. But God bless you guys. We'll see you next weekend as we launch our brand new series, Hunting Giants. We'll see you then. Alshazar, the gods of silver, the gods of gold, the gods of stone, things they, their own hands made. They worship the things they own. They're, they're rockets that they can take them to space. Ooh, in their frustration I can fly to space while everybody else is suffering. System. You think God's going to answer that? God that, is answering. His... This is the day. This is the end, people. The great stuff could be yours if you just tell me what this means. And you know what Daniel said? Because he knew what it meant. He's like, keep it. I don't want it. I don't want any of it. <laughs> 
because you sure? Maybe we should just leave this one alone. Maybe we should leave this one alone. And the guy's like, no, I have to know. I have to know what it means. I have to know what it means. So Daniel's like, okay. And, uh, you know, he goes on to say, your majesty, the most high God gave your father sovereignty and great and glory and splendor. God puts the people in charge that they're supposed to be in charge. And he said, because of the high position he gave them, all the nations and every people and every language was scared of him because he did some terrible things. Scared of him, right? Those that the king wanted to put the death, he put the death. Those that he wanted out of the way, he put them out of the way. He did whatever he wanted. But interpret these dreams and he interpreted them. Because of it, he found a great favor in Nebuchadnezzar's eyes. But he told Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this gigantic tree that, uh, you know, grow up and it, and, uh, and, and it sheltered all the animals. And it was very symbolic. All the animals. Sheltered all the animals. All animal sacrifices. Symbolic of, of, of a king that would rise up and basically the whole world would be under its, you know, its, its, its rule. It's but in an instant, it's new to it was that. locked it's down. Been... He had this dream and it was cut down. But the stump, the stump and the, uh, the root remained in the ground. Now this is significant because I saw Trump as... So that would be when it cut, cut and added to it. Nebuchadnezzar. And when things are still in, when they're still root, it can be regrown. It can still be, you can still attach something to it. And I had said that in an instant, everything was going to be taken away from it. So I'm seeing this as a, imagine you know, eat this host body with AI mixture inside that you can't see. And male, consider male and female. So this, this would be like an implant inside of the chest cavity. And uh, so as a male, it's just flat. But then when you go from male to female, you push the AI button and then that uh, your you know your boobs pop out and so that would be that the female type and then this would be the male and this is the tree that giant tree that um, that was in the garden the evil tree so the power of the air and then God's going to rapture us and after we rapture the Antichrist is going to take over the current devil's government system that's, right. that's why this is the tribulation right there rise up and basically the whole world would be under its you know it's 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 rule but could interpret these dreams and he interpreted them because of it he found a great favor in nebuchadnezzar's eyes but he told nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this gigantic tree And then you concentrate on strange. What does the word strange mean? Well, it's simple. You look it, look it up in a common sense dictionary. Strange m means other, unusual, another. Wait a minute. What is an other flesh besides man? Aren't they animals? That, uh, you know, grow up and it, and, uh, and, and it sheltered all the animals. And it was very symbolic of, of, a, of a king that would rise up and basically the whole world would be under its, you know, its, its, its rule. But Aren't they animals? Yeah, because the Bible shows you what flesh is. There's another type of flesh, other type of flesh. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 6. But this ain't humans that Noah is bringing into the ark. God tells Noah to bring in what? Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. Verse 20. 
animals. Animals and beasts, see that? And the creeping thing, animals that can crawl, anything that uh, crawls, insects, snakes, etc. And the fowls of the air, so the birds that fly. Now look at this, this is... Strong. For it repenteth me, so uh, it repenteth me. So something that mankind did with the animals then. See that? Hey, word for word, all right? Sometimes you don't even understand basic word for word interpretation. That changes his mind about uh, his creation of man, but also animals. So the creation of man, humans, and animals. Why would God change his mind on creating the animals? Aren't they innocent? They didn't do anything wrong. Isn't it mankind? Why would God wipe out the animals? Because the context, again, it says both man and the creatures, right? Go to Genesis 6, Genesis 6. I've given you something extremely important today. I hope that you'll remember that. This is bigger than the deep doctrines you hear about the giants <laughs> and the mythology creatures. People spend too much time concentrating on those deep things rather than their As own As we launch our brand new series, Hunting Giants. We'll see you then. Uh, you know, grow up in it, in, uh, and, and it sheltered all the animals. And it was very symbolic of, of, a, of a king that would rise up and basically the whole world would be under its, you know, its, its, its rule. But in an instant, it was locked down. He had this dream and it was cut down. But Just like the giant Philistine Goliath. Oh, this is a show. Okay, so let me get into this. A couple of weeks ago, archaeologists discovered an etching, an inscribed stone, and it had on it the last king of Babylon. Now, Babylon, just so you know that word Babylon, it was a great kingdom. It means confusion with mixture. All right. Christ. All right. Watch your walk. likely to rise the death toll in China, the China flood. That truth goes over goes over there so the death toll of people that are dying in Christ is likely to rise in the next coming weeks. Floods are getting worse and the number of people exposed ten times higher than the ten times greater than the sorcerers, the soothsayers, the the ones that couldn't interpret the dreams. Nabonidus is the guy's name. This is why we should be excited, because the last king of Babylon, his name, by the way, not Nebuchadnezzar. No, no, no. Nabonidus is the guy's name. Why do you think it's a pet goat? Why do you think it's a pet goat? Goats are animals, animal sacrifices. You have a pet goat. All right, let's he look at Genesis the chapter 6 and uh, of the verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Okay, what does that mean? It means, notice here, that what and kind of it, man? what's that referring to? It's referring to verse 5, everything that's going on with mankind's wickedness. 
So because of mankind's wickedness, this made what? At verse 6, Paron. repented the Lord that he had Move made up. man. So I repent means a change of mind. A change of mind. So notice that God, he had a change of mind. Right after Nebuchadnezzar. Some say that he's related. Now, in the book of Daniel, this is where it gets weird, okay? Because if Trump is significant of Nebuchadnezzar, then you would say that President Biden would be Nabonidus. Now, this could actually do this if you designed it in a way to create a very, very strong force field. Okay, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. Let me show you the word serpent. See the word serpent Conquering right here? To conquer. 51, See, he has to fight against here's, the current government. Here's system. what it means. It means to six. whisper a magic spell, prognosticate. Does that say divine, right? Divining serpent. See, I told you, prognosticate means divining. See, serpent right there in Genesis. The serpent, the divining serpent beguiled me to lead astray to delude morally uh, to delude or morally seduce so she was seduced so that's why uh, we're waiting for a pre-tribulation rapture yes you have to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture people who deny that doctrine are of an antichrist belief and they do understand how to control things but see they have a master a prince over them principalities right those that serve a prince well they have a master over them and he is coordinating this if you're still thinking about the devil as a little red man with a pointy tail and a pitchfork well you're about to be introduced to the real to the real one Oh, yeah, he's going to show up. Don't you worry about a thing. It's all around the corner. Join me. That's probably as, as literal as, as he means it. Oh, divining serpent. Well, that's one hell of a coincidence, isn't it? It's just crazy. All these home run coincidences the Lord shows me. Isn't it weird? How many coincidences?